hell of a week for Ronna McDaniel, hell of a week over at NBC News. Yeah, Ronna McDaniel's out. Uh, we put up this first element here. Uh, the, one of the briefest <laughs> tenures as an NBC News analyst uh, in NBC News analyst history, I would think. Uh, she did one interview with Kristen Welker, a bit of a grilling on the, on the Sunday show, and that was it. Now, she'll still get paid, is my understanding, her entire contract, because they don't... That's what happened to Megyn Kelly, too. Yes, yeah, because they don't have a justification other than, oh, that was a mistake, it turns out. Their employees are mad. It turns out everybody is mad about this internally. Yeah, nothing changed. Yeah, no, like no, Ryan McDaniel didn't say anything new that's right. egregious that anybody's taking issue with. It was Chuck Todd and Joe Scarborough have said, basically it was, they would have objected before the announcement was even made. That's out there in the open. So it's a pretty good case for uh, no real reason to drop the contract um, in a way that would take funding away from her. So there's an interesting part of Rachel Maddow's long rant about the hiring of, uh, of Ronna McDaniel that now in light of McDaniel's firing, I think is uh, perhaps worth revisiting. Uh, this is Rachel Maddow talking specifically about the distinction between NBC and MSNBC uh, on her show earlier this week. It's my understanding that MSNBC's leadership did not object to Ronna McDaniel being hired by NBC News when the matter first arose, but... When the hiring was announced and MSNBC staff essentially unanimously and instantly expressed outrage, our leadership at MSNBC heard us, understood, and adjusted course. We were told this weekend in clear terms, Ronna McDaniel will not be on our air. Ronna McDaniel will not be on MSNBC. And I say that and give you that level of detail because there has been an effort since by other parts of the company to muddy that up in the press and make it seem like that's not what happened at MSNBC. I can assure you that is what happened at MSNBC. If, if you care what I think about this, I will tell you the fact that Ms. McDaniel is on the payroll at NBC News, to me, that is inexplicable. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't hire a, like a, a wise guy. You wouldn't hire a made man, like a mobster, to work at a DA's office, right? <laughs> you, you wouldn't hire a pickpocket to work as a TSA screener. And so I, I find the decision to put her on the payroll ex inexplicable. Okay, Ryan, something really interesting there that gets to the heart of the story where she's saying you wouldn't hire a pickpocket uh, to work at, I think she says TSA in the clip. Uh, but you, you know, in, in journalism, you would interview the pickpocket, mm -hmm. right? Like that's kind of part of the job. Uh, if you have a, a massive surge in retail theft, which some cities actually have been dealing with recently, you might want to get the perspective of the thieves. <laughs> so yeah. even if I buy her comparison, uh, and by the way, I would apply that to literally all politicians. They constantly, Joy Reid said on MSNBC, we want more Republicans on MSNBC. Give me more, this is a real quote, Adam Kinzinger's and Liz Cheney's. Also pickpockets, by the way. Nicole Wallace, who lied about the Iraq war for the Bush mm -hmm. administration, hosts a show on MSNBC. So while we are drawing red lines in the sand at anybody who could potentially be the pickpocket, come on, give me a break. I'm not sure that MSNBC or NBC News is in any position to do that. Yeah, and she also said you wouldn't have the mafia come and work with the prosecutors. <laughs> but actually, when you set up the SEC, they had Joe Kennedy run it. Uh, who was yes. you know, mob-linked and was brought in because he was one of the most corrupt kind of traitors. You can say that because you're there. also Irish. That, there you go. Otherwise, um, it's... Yeah, exactly. It's but, anti Irish bigotry. Yeah, it's in the family. Uh, but look at the people who are complaining. Joe Scarborough, Republican <laughs> congressman. Mika Brzezinski, uh, the daughter of uh, Brigham Brzezinski, one of the most bloodthirsty kind of imperialists that, the, that our government produced in the 20th century. And um, yeah, like you said, Nicole Wallace, mm -hmm. uh, who... George W. Bush, like all of those MSNBC viewers at one point were chanting, uh, Bush lied, people died. Yeah. And Nicole Wallace was the one writing those lies yeah. and, and was the spokesperson for those lies. And then you've got Jen Psaki, who was you know, an Obama and Biden partisan spokesperson. You know, most of the spokespeople wind up going to you know, one network or another. So clearly what they're saying is that that's okay, but Ronna McDaniel, this uh, is beyond the pale, be, uh, be basically because uh, she was, you know, vaguely supportive, or you know, do you, do you tell me how supportive she was of kind of Trump's like January sixth insurrectionary act 
activities. Yeah, that's what it all comes down to. This is how Jen Psaki actually explained it. Jen Psaki uh, came out and addressed head on the. Like, I'm a hack. Yeah, I'm she, a partisan, she was like, you know. But I'm here. Right. She was like, you people have pointed out that I work at MSNBC. And she was like, but it's different because of election denialism. And Ryan, I think we've been Somebody clear. Somebody circulated a clip of her. Um, Pretending that the U.S. never interferes with uh, South American elections. Perfect. I mean, you can just, there's such a wealth. Those those elections you can deny. They're, uh, the, the things that they said, I saw clips going around, the things that they said to, that, you know, maybe they had good reason for saying them back at, in the early days of the pandemic, but that were, I mean, Fauci is a great example. Fauci himself, like Nicole Wallace, Fauci, Adam Kinziger, Liz Cheney. I mean, people who have trafficked in disinformation, period. Um, that we don't draw the red line at. We're drawing the red line at this Trump insurrection, um, like, well, not even the insurrection, but like the the Trump election denialism, as they call it, as Jen Psaki, uh, I think, directly called it, because Ronna McDaniel flirted with it. Um, the, the bad news for MSNBC is that Ron McDaniel is like moderately pro-Trump uh, compared to a lot of the Republican mm-hmm. base. Not all Republican voters, um, but Ron McDaniel, I think in her interview with Kristen Walker, said something so gross. I don't know if you caught this part where, and this is before she was fired, it was her first interview. It's when she's, uh, you know, wants that $300,000, wants to make a good impression, wants to get invited to the uh, NBC Christmas party or whatever. Uh, saying, you know, when you are head of the RNC, when you work for the party, you just got to take one for the team, and I can now be more myself. That's what she said, uh, which is code for I lied for follow- years you're to just make just following money. orders. Yes, I, I lied professionally uh, for the power and the money, and uh, now I can get the power and the money, uh, but without lying. But so. why, why would MSNBC viewers or NBC viewers want her actual thoughts? Like, who cares what her actual thoughts are? To the extent that she's remotely interesting, yeah, yeah. it's because of her access to power. Yeah. And because of the insurrectionary support. Like, that's, those, are the, those are the kinds of things that actually matter. Right. Like, what Ron McDaniel actually thinks about X, Y, or Z issue is I can't I can't begin to imagine why that would be remotely interesting to anybody. Yes, yeah, they actually should have they should have the guts to hire somebody uh, who actually makes their journalism or worthwhile. Just, or just interview them. Like that's the funniest thing. Like you want Republicans or Democrats on your channel? Right. Just call them. Yeah. And they will come on because you have millions of people watching you. You it, don't actually have to pay them. It reminds me of the New York Times hiring James Bennett to run their opinion section so that he could bring more conservative voices on. Them running a conservative piece by Tom Cotton and then freaking firing James Bennett over it. This is like the dumbest thing in the world. It's because they can't figure out their business model. Like the New York Times hasn't realized that it now has to be, uh, instead of being like the paper of record that's responsive to this uh, broad swath of the public that reads it around the country, they're responsive to like the NPR tote bag crowd, which creates a different business incentive. Like that's just a different, you're, you're not doing neutral news for all of America in the new business model um, where mass media is dying. You're, you're responsive to a different group of people. Um, and so for the sake of like the journalism, the quote sacred airwaves that uh, that's an actual description from Nicole Wallace, they purport to care about, um, you know, you would want to have someone even more hardcore than Ronna McDaniel. You would want to have like an actual Trump 2020 election was stolen type of person on the show because if you're confident in your facts, get Steve Bannon on there. Get Steve Bannon on there. You can, but in all seriousness, like normalize the Steve Bannon on NBC because that's it. People don't need to be protected. Uh, what they need is to trust that the people who are saying Steve Bannon is wrong because of A, B, and C are themselves telling the truth and are that that those uh, those disputes with Steve Bannon are rooted in uh, something real. And now nobody trusts anyone. So when Steve Bannon says something that's wrong, it's like, well, who do you trust? Do you trust him? Do you trust uh, the people who are also wrong, uh, who are saying he's wrong? Nobody knows who to trust. And one good way to build rebuild trust is to actually like talk to people <laughs> and figure that stuff out. And uh, yes, uh, agreed. There, we saw, there we solved the problem for NBC. We do have one uh, final element we can oh, put and, up the screen. This and, is and relatedly, by the way, uh, the the biggest gift to Trump has been his deplatforming from liberal agree 
media. And here's an example of, of corporate media not learning that lesson. lesson. This is from Sarah Fisher at Axios uh, last night. She reported that uh, Cesar Conde of NBC Universal, he's the chairman of the group, took full responsibility. He said he approved <laughs> Ron McDaniel's hiring. So that went all the way up, though, unfortunately, apparently not to Joe and Mika. Uh, they had no say in it. But you're right, Ryan, this massive effort to say, like, we have guilt about Donald Trump being elected in 2016. We think people need to be protected from Trump. We're not going to air his rallies. We're not going to let him uh, say whatever the hell he wants to on Twitter or Facebook, whatever. It has given so much credibility uh, to Trump's yeah. claims of, of censorship. And, and he the, is really extremely And censored. the more normie people see of Trump, the less they like him, the more he's in their face, the let less, go. The less they him. appreciate him. When, and when he's at a distance, you're like, oh, wasn't that guy kind of funny and eh, wages were good. <laughs> that's true. Uh, but then he's get back in your face. You're like, oh, yeah, that's why I didn't like that guy. Yeah. But the liberals, by keeping him off of Twitter and Facebook and, and kind of keeping his antics away from people's faces, have actually done the thing that Trump's advisors had failed to do, mm -hmm. which is to get Trump to just cool it and mm -hmm. stop being such a freak all the time. Mm -hmm. So he gets to be a freak all the time. But people don't see the freakouts. Yeah, it's, it's was, is this a Corey Lewandowski or Steve Bannon quote? Like, let Trump be Trump. Don't try to make Trump someone else. That was like the Trump campaign motto, uh, but it should also be the anti-Trump motto because right. letting yeah, Trump be exactly. Trump is actually more powerful. Uh, and, and if you have a good, like if you're working with Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden, uh, it might be, you know, harder to control the uh, opposition to Donald Trump, but most of the country doesn't like Donald Trump. So yeah. let Trump be Trump and you just focus on doing a better job as the anti-Trump side instead of uh, clinging to the crutch of censorship and disinformation. Hey, if you liked that video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Breaking Points. If you want to see the rest of CounterPoints, go to breakingpoints.com to become a premium member and get the full uncut show every morning in your inbox and on Spotify. Help us build independent news and get the full show every morning at breakingpoints.com.